Hey guys, it's your uh, FFW here. Now for another weekend of woodworking. Um, this week's gonna be a, a lot more of me talking. Hopefully you guys aren't bored of me yet. Um, but I wanted to go over basically all the things that I've learned online um, to see how I can build these drawers. Um, there's a lot of different ways of doing joints and a lot of different ways of doing um, drawers in general. So I, I guess I, I'm gonna tell you how I chose the method that I am making the, the drawers this week so um, stay tuned and uh, sorry about the hair I need a haircut so yeah hopefully uh, next week uh, you'll see me with better hair oh and one other thing um, I really appreciate all the feedback that I got uh, this past weekend um, it was really really helpful and trying to make my videos a lot better here so I uh, appreciate all the feedback hopefully I can do some things make some changes to make uh, my videos a lot better here. So thanks a lot. So last weekend, uh, I made all of the, uh, the drawer sides here and um, they're not cut the, the length just yet. It's just a rough cut. Uh, I made it oversized a little bit so I can play around with the final dimensions. Um, so what I plan on putting in these lower drawers are these, um, I'm not sure what these things are called. Uh, these uh, drawer hangers where you put files in. And um, I know that these have um, these metal hooks on the side that ride along the top of the drawer. And I know that this material, this, uh, this pine wood, not pine wood, this plywood, is um, not going to be strong enough on the edges here um, because uh, with these little metal sides, these would dig in and start scraping along this over time. And um, there's a lot of gaps, actually, if you can see that right there, there's a lot of gaps in this plywood um, and these uh, these metal hangers would catch right on them. Um, one thing I forgot to mention last week is that yes this plywood has got a lot of layers in it and um, it, it, it's pretty good in maintaining its form. Um, the problem with this particular plywood um, because of cost is that there's the inner layers here um, are not always uh, completely uniform. There are gaps, there are holes in the inner layers and um, that's one way for companies to keep it cheap. Um, so what I plan on doing is to use some of the scrap oak pieces that I have and I will uh, basically router an edge here and I'll, I'll show you that guys uh, later. Um, I'll router an edge here that these uh, hangers will be able to fall into and slide along. And the plan is I would glue, secure that uh, oak piece on top here in place and the hangers are right along there and then on the very bottom here I am going to cut a, uh, uh, a rabbit to put in the bottom of the drawer and I'll go over that in uh, the later part of the video what a, a rabbit is. And um, so I have some MDF, um, I'll show you guys that later as well. Um, some cheap MDF wood that's half inch thick and I'll cut a half inch uh, rabbit on the bottom and, and put that MDF on the bottom and I'll also on the back of the drawer put that uh, MDF as well in on the front. So basically the bottom, front and back are going to be made of MDF. The sides are going to be made out of this plywood because it's, it's pretty strong and um, yeah that's pretty much my plan for this weekend. So there are a lot of different drawer joints out there that you can do, um, but the most popular is uh, the butt joint. So what a butt joint is, is you have uh, one cut like this, uh, no, no uh, rabbits or anything like that, and a rabbit cut, actually let's back up a second, a rabbit cut is uh, what I have here. It's uh, basically you cut out a trench on, on one side here, and uh, so a rabbit cut is good in the sense that if you go like this to a joint, there is a lot of surface area to glue uh, along the inside edge here and on the outside edge. And so that makes a really strong joint, but um, typically what I've seen in drawers is, is this butt joint kind of design. So for instance, you would have the drawer side here and the, the front of the drawer here, these are just scrap pieces, but just for example, you got the front of the drawer here, 
And so you would butt joint in this fashion. The, the uh, front of the drawer or the back of the drawer is on the inside of the sides of the drawers. Now, what I've seen online, um, a bad design would be to have the front of the drawer on the outside of the side drawer. So if, for instance, you were to be yanking on this drawer, which happens a lot, right? We open and close it. Um, you'll be yanking and it'll be pulling. If you were pulling from this side, it'll be pulling away this way. Um, and if you had a, a glue right there or, or fasteners, um, you will always be uh, pulling where there's not a lot of um, meat on this side to, to glue or screw into. So um, a lot of drawers, what they do is you have the uh, front or, or the back of the drawer on the inside of the sides and you would screw in this way and if you were to pull obviously you would have some kind of metal fastener or something in there to, to prevent it from ripping out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do on this design and actually I've had the pleasure of looking at other desks inside the house and I'll show you them in a second here. So I was looking around the shop and uh, I remembered that I had some uh, kitchen cabinet grade uh, drawers here so just taking a peek inside you can see this is also a butt joint too you got this piece right here you got this piece right here as a front um, as, as, as a false front and then you got this piece as your um, the, the real front of your drawer and this is what I'm going to be doing too by the way but the cool thing about this thing is it's got dovetails so what dovetails is you can you can see the shape here um, these dovetail joints um, are, are probably one of the strongest um, in, in any joinery and woodworking and this obviously I, I don't have the capability of doing yet but um, hopefully one day I'll learn how to do this but this is the uh, the one of the better joints you can you can do. Um, instead I'll be doing pocket holes and uh, I'll show those in a second here. Um, and pocket holes are, are just basically a, a quicker way of, of doing uh, a joint that's almost as strong as this. So this is our uh, baby uh, changing station and just taking a look at what you typically see in like an IKEA furniture type drawer. Um, if uh, you guys have uh, assembled any of one of these, you'll probably understand how these things go together. So you got the, the drawer front here. There's studs that come out of the drawer front down here and down here. And you got this uh, this cam that twists and, and pulls and locks into that stud to, to pull this drawer front into here. So this is, I, I guess, a, a, a butt joint and it's very cheap and still strong enough for its purposes. Another thing to note that you got a, a, the drawer bottom here there's a, a track that is uh, made into the side here that this drawer bottom slides into. Uh, this is a popular type of design to keep the drawer light. The problem is um, it does not provide any support to the rest of the drawer in keeping its shape or and also it does not provide a lot of support and um, uh, a lot of heavy things you can put inside the drawer. So this is the uh, awesome desk that uh, Grandpa Bob made for everyone and uh, this is another hand-built piece of art really and so just checking the way that he made his drawers he also has drawer sides, false um, drawer front and uh, a butt joint here and I'm assuming I can't really see but I'm assuming he screwed in this way into the sides and also glued as well one thing to note is the drawer bottom here he got a thin piece of of uh, wood that he basically pinned into the the bottom uh, of the sides here um, so that is a good way for swapping these out if this ever does become damaged um, if you put too much weight inside the drawer but I am going to do something slightly different than that one good thing to have for a false drawer front um, is if you have this decorative piece out front you can be a little you'll be able to hide a lot of, uh, of the screws and a lot of the fasteners behind this um, prettier piece of wood out front so back to the shop um, what I'll be doing is uh, basically in my mind overkill um, 
so something that is going to be very strong, um, but it's going to be pretty heavy too. So let's talk about the strength here. Um, I will be doing that uh, drawer front uh, on the inside because as you can see from previous examples, um, from, from the good side of things, uh, that's probably the strongest way to go. Um, another thing that I'll be doing, instead of having a thin piece of wood um, on the, the bottom of the shelf, uh, or, or having a thin piece of wood along a, a, a track on the bottom of the shelf, I am going to be putting in uh, some of a scrap MDF. MDF. Um, this is half inch MDF. And this is going to add a lot of weight to the drawers, but at the same time it's going to be very, very strong. It's going to add support to the, the sides of the drawer, and I'll be able to put a lot of weight on top as well. So, um, in order to put this board in the sides of the wood, I'm going to be creating a rabbit. So one good piece of advice that I've seen online that people have said before is, if you're making a joint, if you're sizing a joint, um, always use a scrap piece of wood first, never use uh, the piece of wood that you're going to be using. Um, because, here's case in point, uh, if you can see on this side, uh, pull out here, uh, there is, uh, this is my first, actually it's my second or third attempt at making a rabbit cut. Technically I have never really made a rabbit cut to make drawers before, so this was my first time. Um, you can see that there's a little, pe a little piece of uh, wood in here that uh, stuck out and that's really not the way to do things. And I, this is my second or third time doing this uh, today and I was wondering why do I keep leaving this piece of uh, wood in there. And um, what I found out was in my measurements, another, here, here's another pro tip, always take into account the width of the blade. I can't, uh, I can't stress that enough. So um, I didn't take account, into account the width of the blade and I, I set my, uh, my gauge here to half inch deep cut, which is basically set to uh, the width of that uh, MDF that I showed you earlier. And I, I made a few cuts and I, I was left with that piece of uh, scrap in there. Um, so in order to account for um, the width of the blade, you had to move this over an eighth of an inch. Um, it, that, because that's the, the, the width of the blade here. So right now I am going to take all my boards and make the first cut. Uh, I'm going to make this first cut down here. and. Um, Next, I'll flip the boards and I'll, I'll make this cut down here so I'll get all the boards at the same time with this uh, rabbit cut here. You know the saying, measure twice and cut once? Well, if you measure three times and cut and you still screw up, well, you're just an idiot. And I have done that before. So, I've been very, very careful in trying to do this next part. And I've been basically procrastinating this for, for a while now. Which is, how wide do I make my drawers? And so, I have a folder here and I have a cabinet upstairs that I've been measuring. And so what I've decided was it has to be exactly 12 inches in width on the inside. And that dimension is important because I am going to be cutting the, the drawer front and the drawer uh, back uh, exactly 12 inches wide. And from there, uh, we would have uh, the oak up here where the, the hangers would hang on to. Um, and this basically dictates the, the rest of the width of the, the, the cabinet, really. Here I am using the uh, cross-cut slit again to create these drawer fronts and uh, backs. Just taking, I measured one piece out, I cut it, and I'm just taking 
that piece laying it on top and uh, seeing where the cut's going to be and just adjusting the, the new piece to line up with uh, the line that's already in the cross-cut sled. That's one of the beauties of using a cross-cut sled is you already have a line that you are you are uh, matching up to instead of using a uh, measuring tape every time. So this is a uh, dry fit of all the pieces put together. Um, this is actually an old piece of MDF that I painted, so that's why it's white in the back here. This is the back end. That's the front end. Um, here are the oak uh, runners up top, but I haven't uh, made routed the edge here yet, so these uh, these hangers fit in uh, a ledge. I haven't done that yet. Um, and here is the, the joint on the bottom. I don't have everything lined up correctly yet, just yet, but um, just to get an idea of how things lined up. So that rabbit cut down there in the sides and that uh, base uh, MDF board right here it uh, fits right in underneath. Alright so I put all the boards on top of a, a scale here, um, not the best way of doing things and um, so if we were to zoom in a little bit and you can kind of see it's a little over 15 pounds, probably around 18. Um, I didn't have the oak on top uh, for uh, the top pieces there on here yet. I don't have glue, I don't have fastener, so I think all in all this thing is going to be around 20 pounds. Um, so uh, I could probably save a little bit of weight if I if I cut um, a section out of the, the baseboard here and cut some material out from the side here as well. Um, I could probably get five more pounds out of this, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of work and I really don't want to do that right now. So um, this is going to have to be 20 pounds. So this is a good stopping point for today. Um, big shout out to my wife. Uh, without her, I wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff on the weekends. Uh, she watches over the, the daughter of ours and um, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I urge everyone to take a look at the drawers. Um, I learned a lot uh, making these uh, this week and um, had a lot of fun. Um, so next time you open a drawer, see how it's made. And um, you can see how uh, difficult it is in certain aspects uh, on how to design and create something that fits a certain application. So um, tomorrow we will be doing pocket holes and um, I will be breaking out my pocket hole jig. Uh, it should be pretty fun. I haven't used it before in any application yet, so uh, it should be uh, another learning experience for me. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow.